Yeah, my name is Sarah Morgan. I'm the CEO and founder of Nanolit Technologies. And um, we are using quantum dots. Um, we're using quantum dots to simulate sunlight in office lighting. Um, we retrofit light fixtures um, with the quantum dot lighting and we shift the color temperature throughout the day in order to support a healthy circadian rhythm. What I'm going to talk about today is uh, resilience. Um, and the reason I felt that I would be uh, specifically relevant for that topic um, is that I have run uh, companies in New York, Glasgow, Amsterdam, Vancouver, and um, have uh, lived across a few different cultures where uh, ideas around business and failure are uh, different. And uh, failure uh, in most cultures I have observed is seen as just the worst possible thing that could ever happen to you. So on that note, who here has started a company and failed? Great, can you stand up? Okay, great. Who, who out of you has raised investment Okay, who has tried to raise investment and failed? Okay, everyone who has run a company and then tried to raise investment and failed, stay standing. Everybody else sit down. Okay, so what is it that gives you the ineffable quality of being optimistic? Okay, well, so statistically speaking, you're more likely to succeed than everybody else in the room, or you're more likely to develop an addiction. So, <laughs> so um, I, I actually do want to ask you, what was it that made you dust yourself off, get back up, and get back on the horse again? What, what did you do? Uh, I found a good team. Okay. Really inspired Okay. What, what did you do? Okay. What did you do? I fled three companies and found three companies. So Excellent. I don't. I, I lost my money, but most of them were from investors, and some of them I gave them back. So it's just moving forward. Excellent. I started studying failure quite a bit, and I found this uh, Harvard professor that wrote that this is on failure in the 1800s in the US. And that book really helped me well, get myself back. Great. It's what important to serve. Okay. I <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. I wanted to make us a little bit more. <laughs> I wanted to make us a little bit more intimate with the idea that actually success is not uh, a course well set. It's uh, it's withstanding enough failure to then succeed. So, um, according to Time, there are ten top characteristics of resilient people. So um, I have failed um, uh, beautifully with hiring and firing people. I have failed uh, in my first company. Um, I have failed multiple times in my current company. I have made robustly stupid decisions and um, yet I am still here. And uh, that is because my attitude from a young age coming from a family of entrepreneurs, was that sex, sex, that success, <laughs> <laughs> that sex is the result of many, many failures. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, success. So um, be optimistic is number one on time's list. So. Uh, I've hit five minutes, but I'm going to run through them um, and tell you briefly my experience of each. So, being optimistic. Okay, uh, perhaps 80% of the people I uh, have to spend time with I don't really enjoy, but 20% is really awesome. So, how do I maximize my time with the 20% and reduce my time with the 80%? Sounds obvious, but so often we keep going to the 80% and think the 20% will never be attainable. No? 
how do I go to the more charming situation? As we say, uh, as we say, face your fears. Okay, you suck at some things. It's just a matter of fact. No need to get worried about it. You suck at some things, but for some bizarre reason, there's one thing you're really good at, and that is starting a company. Have a moral compass. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Right? And being a dick doesn't really happen in big ways, right? It's not like a movie moment. It's like, you know what? I'm going to let that guy take the shit on this. I'm not going to actually fess up. That's being a dick. It's minor. But you know what? It's a bunch of minor little dick moves that make you into a big dick. <laughs> Having done it, right? I have done it. Practice spirituality. Okay, I've practiced uh, transcendental meditation for five years. It's been a lifesaver, not necessarily for everybody, but you know, what about working out? What about those things for me, listening to Jay-Z on, on the way to a meeting? Nothing beats listening to the king of hustle on the way to a meeting. These are my ways of practicing spirituality because after all, being an entrepreneur is so selfish, so time consuming, it is in fact a vocation, not dissimilar to being a priest. Okay, uh, get social support. Well, I'm a bit of a hermit and I don't want people to know what my failures are, right? So I have to work really hard and I have to curate with great accuracy the quality of the people I let into my universe because I keep it small. Have resilient role models. Whoever you know that's been through the shit many, many times over and is still happy, that's your resilient role model. Maintain physical fitness, key. Haven't done it in about a year. And so today, <laughs> so today is my commitment to take that back up again. When we moved here from Amsterdam, we were going to boxing, we were running, we were hot yoga masters. And then we moved here and this miserable weather prevented us from doing anything. <laughs> Keep your brain strong. Right? You're going to get beat up a lot. I go, I'm going through due diligence right now, and um, I'm not surprised if soon I'll get asked for my dental records from age five. Now, if I don't keep a strong brain through that process, I will quit five minutes before the finish line. Be cognitively flexible. Not all your ideas were sent by God. Find meaning in what you do. Why are you doing what you do? I know everyone's into culture these days, but realistically, okay, not everyone's Elon Musk. What part, of it, what part of what you do is important and why? And if you can answer those questions, it can be as simple as, I do a good job and I leave a company better than I found it. And that's good. That's good enough. Okay, that's it. Top 10 reasons, uh, top 10 ways in which to stay resilient uh, as an entrepreneur. Yes. Um, you mentioned you travel, you've been in many different cities and many different countries. Um, I myself have been doing change for the past four years, and um, so I'd really like to get your top tips on when moving to a new country and picking up that industry. What sort of things do you do to kind of find out who are the big dogs or guys you want to target within a new country that you there? Wow, that's great. <laughs> I've never been organized on that. Instead, um, I just know that, um, yeah, keeping mentally agile requires, you know, where's my local gym? Um, what, are, what are the local activities that I can do that, that get me into the world here? And then for connecting with the right people, um, I have always uh, believed that um, if you go to where you enjoy being, you're more likely to meet people aligned with who you are and what you enjoy. I used to be a hardcore, hardcore schmoozer for about five years in New York, and it was great. It taught me how to meet people, but then I inevitably realized that um, if I'm doing what I love and I'm going to the places where people do what I love, then it becomes a natural organic process, and then you're not forcing relationships. Mr. says to you what the best way is to ensure that you can maintain that uh, vision of resilience or maintain resilience amongst your first employees. When you're hired in your first two or three, how do you maintain that vision? I think um, 
Who here has had a job that they absolutely hate but they can't quit because they need the money? Wow, okay, that is very few people. Because I have had so many jobs that I hate and couldn't quit because I needed the money. I use those as my reference points. Right, so, uh, you know, if you have a roof over your head and food on the table, you're in the top 10% of the world's population in terms of prosperity. I know, I know, it, I know it sounds Pollyanna-ish, but it, it really is true. Uh, you know, you've got a lot to be grateful for, for the fact that you even have had the level of education and the level of financing in your life that you can even think about starting this type of company. Now you've got to, now you've got to go out and find the right people, and that's a tiny pool of people in which to pick from. So again, uh, I guess I haven't really answered your question. I, I, I think the answer to that question is, you have to get along with people, whether you hire, fire, or never want to speak to them, you have to get along with people. Because it's a tiny little universe that we're, we're all existing in in this startup community. Um, how do you move through it gracefully? I do it by being a hermit. I don't, I don't recommend it. But you know, I prefer to really choose where I spend my time and how I spend it. And again, coming, uh, coming back to that, if you're surrounding yourself by people uh, who enjoy and love what you do, it becomes a much easier, much easier thing to do, I think. Um, what's your timeline? I'm assuming you're longer than most people here being in hardware and software. Like, like I find myself difficult to deal with you know, projects that are that, that can die, can live or die in six months. Where I'm yeah. Looking at three-year projects. Yeah. Um, how much can you kill in six months? No, no, no. How much, how much can you kill? How much can you eliminate as a waste? Uh, me personally? In your company? Quite a little, yeah. Okay. Well, then that's high speed editing, right? Yeah. So we started, uh, I started working on this in 2011, and I'd come just out of the fashion industry. And there, uh, you know, fashion changes every six months. Well, now it's every three months, but you are having to think a year ahead so that you can manufacture now so that you can deliver on time. When you come from that environment, you are at high speed determining what people want a year from now, editing out all the fluff, and then when you put out your collection of 100 so pieces, perhaps only four or five of those will actually go to manufacture. That's a great tool for sharpening the brain. So my approach to technology is um, we have tried all sorts of ideas and now we've thrown them all out. And now what we're going to market with is very simple. It's a minimum viable product. Our timeline is about six months. But I took a very organic approach to my business because I'd had one before that was in manufacturing. Different industry, fashion, not technology. But um, I, took a, I took, with the understanding that coming out with something too early is just as bad as coming out with something too late. But if you're, if you're paddling when the wave comes, then you're going to be okay. So that's how I approach it. I, you know, I am a uh, culture consumer, and that really helps me set the barometer for where we are in relation to where the rest of the industry is at. And kill as quickly as possible. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate.